Most people know about Stonehenge, or at least they've heard about it or have seen pictures of it. There are many theories surrounding Stonehenge. The most widely believed theory is that Stonehenge was built by giants, or giant aliens. My name is Kaylee, and I thought it would be fun to look into it today. Just like in the last Facts or Fiction video, we will look at the theory, the scientific explanation, and at the end I will leave it up to you to decide. There are many tales of giants existing all over the world, and in many religions and mythology there are stories of a giant race. I've heard about the theory that giants built Stonehenge back when I was a teen. I heard tales and read stories on the internet, and it was generally thought to be a cuckoo theory. But there are those who actually believe in it. When I decided to make this video, I had to of course look into the theory. And I have to say, in the past 15 years, this theory has changed a lot. Back when I first heard about it, it was a simple theory. Giants, or giant aliens, made Stonehenge, because humans couldn't move such large stones. And that was the general consensus. Looking into the theory in 2020 kind of blew my mind to be honest. There are way more claims being made by the believers of the theory. Some are quite outlandish and can never be verified. So we are going to look into these different claims, starting with the claim that Stonehenge was a giant house. A house to provide shelter or to act as a stronghold for these giants. The erosion would have destroyed the elements of wood that were originally part of the structure and only the stones still remain. The size of the structure overall would have been diminished due to the erosion of the stones, making the current site smaller than they believed it once was. Some people think that the stones we see today would have been the foundation of the structure, and as the soil eroded around it, the large stones beneath the dirt were revealed. I honestly think this one is too far-fetched, but to each their own. And there is of course the theory that Stonehenge is actually the Tower of Babel, which honestly is incredibly nonsensical in my opinion, as the Tower of Babel in all its tales always has existed in the Middle East and the Middle East alone. They think the Tower of Babel is likely to be Stonehenge as the Tower of Babel was never really found, that Stonehenge is all that remains from the destruction of the tower. They believe that God didn't destroy the tower in its entirety, but left a reminder of what he is capable of, that he should be respected. The Tower of Babel was supposed to be the tower to heaven, to God's kingdom, and for such a project they might have required the aid of giants to build this structure. Of course people have been wondering how these incredibly large sarsen stones got transported from Marlboro Downs all the way to the Salisbury Plain. The theory of giants does give an answer to that, if you believe in it. Giants would have had much less trouble bringing the stones to this site. There is a claim being made that a giant skeleton was found at Stonehenge, and that the public can't be exposed to this information as it would most likely destroy the theory that current humans are the most evolved species. They say that humans have devolved instead of evolved over time, due to our constant reliance on new technologies to fix the things that we were once capable of doing back in prehistoric times. Then there's the claim that the stones themselves are the bones of giants, according to Roger Spur, and that the giants would have been two and a half miles tall. None of it makes any sense! He has made the extraordinary claim that salt water in the flood mixed with mud to perfectly preserve the bodies of giants. The giants, or Nephilim, from the Book of Enoch were wiped out by the flood that God created some 5,000 years ago. Spur says he studied rocks around the world which he claims are formed from the bones of these giants, describing them as mud fossils and claims that many rocks and boulders around the world are the remains of giants. After he studied Stonehenge, he made the claim that the stones are the evidence of the existence of the giants which once roamed the earth. He says that the areas of the stones with discolorations are in fact dried blood, saying the hemoglobin of the red blood cells became locked when the flesh and mud solidified. He claims that when you add acid, the blood once again turns to liquid and pour out of the stones at Stonehenge. Medium.com reports many giant skeletal remains. A female skeleton was found in the Aloha region in Ecuador. She was 7 feet and 4 inches tall. After more research, they found another 5 skeletons between 7 and 8 feet tall. A priest called Carlos Vaca was supposedly part of an excavation into a giant skeleton of over 25 feet tall. They claim these bones were over 10,000 years old. The article states that back in 1871, an archaeological dig at a Native American burial ground unearthed two 
100 giant skeletons up to 9 feet tall in the state of New York. The skeletons are estimated to be approximately 9,000 years old. A giant footprint is located in South Africa. More than 100 years ago it was found and locals call it the footprint of God. It's 1.2 meters long, which would estimate the giant to be between 24 and 27 feet tall if the foot is in proportion to the rest of the body. The print is in granite and there are no chisel marks around it. It's estimated that the footprint is at least 200 million years old. And there are of course many other claims made by this website, but I'm not going to go into that because this video would be way too long. I personally believe that we don't give credit where credit is due when it comes to our ancient ancestors. They were incredibly skilled builders, mathematicians and astronomers. They didn't have the daily distractions that we currently face, they didn't have the light pollution that we experience in modern times and they were far more intelligent than we like to admit in this day and age. There are of course other theories surrounding Stonehenge, that the stones were created out of thin air by the power of mind by a fifth or sixth element aliens or whatever. But for this video I'll stick to just the theories about the giants that we just spoke about that are all unverified. And now it's time to look into the scientific explanation. And it's not necessarily what you think. The scientific community has debated and researched for a long time on how Stonehenge was most likely built, how the stones were transported and how they were erected. The researchers believe that the use of stone balls and grooved planks are most likely the explanation, with the use of oxen to speed up the travel time. This way the huge sarsen stones were able to travel approximately 10 miles a day, taking about two weeks to be transported from the Marlboro Downs to the Salisbury Plain. But of course, this has never been proven beyond a doubt and questions still remain. But in 2003, this all changed, when a retired carpenter and construction worker named Wally Wallington put forward an idea. He's a man that doesn't have a degree in any science, but his way of moving big rocks and other large objects is just incredible. One day he had a eureka moment. He considered placing a small stone underneath a large and heavy block and by finding the right point of balance, he would be able to spin the block with ease. He had a lifetime of knowledge when it came to building and construction. Using that knowledge, he knew that placing a second well-placed stone underneath in combination of attaching a sturdy lever, he could do something even more remarkable. In his experiments, Wallington was able to move a one-ton block at a rate of around 300 feet per hour by himself. He says that if he was to do this with a group of people, it would even go faster. He cleverly engineered a wooden road with bumps the same width as the block of stone. Once set in motion, the design uses the momentum and weight of the block to keep it rolling. This way the stones could have been moved with relative ease. He also tried to answer how the ancient builders could have erected these giant stones. He can be seen in a YouTube video demonstrating how these giant stones could be raised in their position. Using mostly wood and stone as his equipment, he doesn't use any modern machinery. Gravity is his favorite tool, he says. But enough of me talking about it, you can see for yourself. Here's how it's supposed to work. The first thing I'm going to do here is release this temporary shoring I have set and come over here, release some of my counterweights, and that's going to put the entire weight of the block on this rope. So then I'm going to release the rope, come back in, and the rope's going to be my brake. I'm going to guide it into the pit. The easiest way I can explain this is the, this is just a big teeter totter, and I got the big kid on that end, and he's going to go down, and this end's going up. Yes! All right. Now just start spraying the sand. The sand will wash out and the block will start coming down. Once the sand is washed from the pit, the block's own weight slowly stands it up. Okay, finally, she's between the lines, guys. I told you the theories. I told you the explanation. I've shown you the demonstration. And now I'll leave it up to you to decide whatever you believe. Let me know in the comments down below. 
If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click the link in the description down below. I also want to thank my Patreons, Richard Barry and NGC6543. And for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.